Hey everyone, Brandon here, back with another video. And today we're gonna to be talking about how to boost your credit score over 800 in the next 30 to 45 days. This is something that anybody can do. This is a strategy, a tactic that anybody can start with and it'll instantly boost your credit so that you can get a higher credit score. So I'm gonna explain that. We're also gonna talk about how credit works. If you're a beginner, how do you start building credit? How does credit work and how do you improve your credit in general, short term, quick fixes, as well as long term in the overall grand scheme of time. So let's talk about it. Number one is I'm going to pull up a chart. It's by Ask CB, which is a YouTube channel all about credit. Uh, he made this chart and organized it in a perfectly understandable and easy to understand way. So number one, we have different categories, credit card utilization, which is the, the most highly important category that, you're, that determines your credit score. Next is we have payment history, which is also very high. We have derogatory marks, high. Age of credit history, medium. Total accounts, low impact. Credit inquiries, low impact. So in order from greatest to least, we have what affects our credit scores most. So credit card utilization. Now it's, it's broken down into excellent, good, fair, poor, and very poor. What is credit card utilization? This is so simple. I have personally, I have a $20,000 limit on my American Express credit card. If I use $2,000, if I go right now and I go buy a new couch, or I go buy some car, some tires for my car, or whatever the case may be, and I spend two thousand dollars. Now I'm only using two thousand dollars out of twenty thousand dollars, which is ten percent of my total available credit. Which means I'm in the category of right there, good in between good and excellent, pretty much right there, at ten percent good. So my credit card utilization would be in the good range. Now, what would make it the same situation? Say you have only a two thousand dollar credit limit and you max out your credit card and you buy those new tires or you buy that you know, $2,000 couch, well, what's gonna happen is you're gonna be at a credit utilization of 100% because you maxed out your credit card and your total available credit that you have to borrow. So if you hold that over a few months, it's gonna go down on your credit report and you're gonna get a very poor under that category under credit card utilization. This is probably the most important thing to building your credit right here and you're learning it right now on this channel. Now, what you want to do in this strategies and tactics for this, you want to make sure that you're always staying under the good range, so 29% or less. And the lower, the even lower, the better. And so what you can you do is you can pay more money that you earn from your job or from your businesses to pay down your credit cards. Also, you can increase their limits. So what, what you should do, a tip for this is every six months to 12 months, call your credit card company and ask them to either reduce your interest rate or increase your limit. American Express often notices when I'll borrow a bunch of money and then pay it all back. They'll actually automatically boost my credit or uh, boost my limit. Um, pretty every about every about six months to a year they'll automatically do it. But if they don't, I'll call them. And at first they didn't do that automatically. I had to work for it and I had to actually call them and try to request it. All it is is a simple phone call, simple request. Call your Visa card, call your American Express, and get them to boost the you know the credit limit. When you have a higher credit limit, you're going to be using less debt. Now this is going to require self control because now that you have all this money available that you can borrow, it's not. You got to remember it's not your money. It's someone else's money, and you're just able to borrow it whenever you need to. But they're going to charge you interest on it. And so you want to have that internal self-control to only use that credit card for strategic purchases or, you know, things that really matter and not just waste it on different, you know, things. So next is going to be payment history, which is also ranked very high. You want to have, ideally, you want to make every single payment on time. Now, there's a caveat to this because sometimes credit card companies will not actually like, ref it won't, they won't put it on your credit that you missed a payment. And like if you miss that one month. Sometimes there's a grace period, and so you're gonna to wanna to find out if there is even a grace period and how long it is until it actually goes on your credit report with your credit card company. But you wanna make sure, to the best of your ability, you're not obviously borrowing too much money and you're able to pay it back every month whenever the payment's due. So 100% is gonna put you in excellent. You know, 99% good, fair, 98, 97. Very poor is gonna be 97% or less. So if you're, that's not a lot of wiggle room. If you're making late payments, it's gonna destroy this section of your credit score. So you're gonna have a very poor score. Next is derogatory remarks. This would be closing accounts and closing accounts that are um, in debt. So you owe a lot of money on it and there's collection calls coming after you trying to get you to pay it. This is uh, a, you know, a high, pretty, pretty high to medium, upper medium um, detriment to your credit score. It's gonna hurt your credit score. So the goal is to not close accounts 
and also not to definitely do not close them if you have um, you know you're um, a lot of a lot of debt on that account and you just can't make take it anymore. Totally, the best thing to do would be there's and there's strategies and this is a whole other topic. But what you can do is sometimes you can negotiate your debt. So if you have a, a debt with a collection company or something, you can negotiate that to be less. But you, at minimum, you want to make your minimum payment and at least look like you're trying to pay some payments until you can finally get some additional income to wipe out that debt. Next is going to be age of credit history. So credit history is a hard one for a lot of young people. It's hard for me. It was hard for me with my car and my house, all these things. So credit history is how long your accounts have been open. So when you're as early as possible, if you do not have a credit card and you're watching this video, you should absolutely get one as fast as possible. You should get like three as fast as possible or five. So what you want to do and, and then just have self-control and not spend all that money. But what you want to do is you want to have credit history. And credit history is, you may not care about this now, but it's gonna affect you when you do care about it. Credit history comes in handy when you've had a, a relationship where, okay, I have a credit card, but I don't really use it because I use my debit card all the time. I'm gonna pay for my gas. Every time you pay for gas, every week to two weeks, you fill up your gas tank, well, what you could do is you could use your credit card to pay it and then pay it off at the end of the month. Do that, that's how I personally started building my credit. And then just do it on multiple cards. So buy groceries on one card and buy your gas on another card and then pay that off. You're gonna be using a very low amount of your debt utilization, which is the most important. Then you're also gonna have, you're starting to build history, you're starting to make payments on time. So that's how you could start. Next is gonna be total accounts. Total accounts is an exciting one and that's where I'm actually struggling. I think I have six accounts, five accounts right now, which would only put me in the poor category, which is really bad. So my goal is to get to about 12 types of credit accounts that I have available to me. So. How you can do that? Well, you're gonna to have to, you know, apply for different credit cards, get a personal line of credit from the bank, auto loan, mortgage loan, different loans also go affect your credit. And so this is something that is lower impact, but it does, it's more of a long-term thing. So over time, over the next 10 years of your life, you should be acquiring more credit cards, not that you're spending on, but that you're sparring a little bit, paying it back, borrowing a little bit, paying it back. Now, it even shows you on the excellent category that people with 850 credit scores are showing total accounts as 21 accounts or more of lines of credit. Now, and this is not, this is facts. So this is not, and, and don't necessarily hate me for explaining it to you. This is how the game works and the goal is to understand how this works so we can play it to our advantage and slowly work to it, you know, work this direction in our life over time. So good, 11 to 20. Uh, fair, uh, it should be about 10 to, probably 10 to 20. Poor, six to 10, you know, very poor is zero to five. I bet most of the people watching this video and most people in life in general are zero to five with their credit limit. They only have one or two credit cards and they have, maybe they have a car payment or they lease someplace. So what you wanna do is you want to have multiple um, you know, credit cards or credit accounts open. Low, okay, last one, low impact credit inquiries. Zero, obviously credit inquiries. This is, we're talking about throughout a year, how many credit inquiries are you getting onto your credit? Now, this is what drives me crazy because I, I'm always trying to call and boost my credit score or I'm trying to buy a house or buy a car and, and do all these things and that all goes towards your credit inquiries. And there's two different kinds, there's hard pools and soft pools. Hard pools is what we're talking about in this case, which is going to be getting an auto loan, getting a house loan, any hard pool of your credit where they have to look at your whole financial situation and make a decision if they're gonna give you money or not, that is something that counts. Now, soft pulls is gonna be more like, and this is, you could have multiple of these throughout the year, but you still wanna have the least amount of them as possible. Sometimes credit cards could be a soft pull, I don't, I don't, I don't know of any personal situations of that, but also, you're, uh, when you're trying to get a lease and they're pulling your credit to check to see if you're, uh, you know, you know, your credit history for your lease, then that would be an example of a soft pool credit. So, how can we improve this now starting today? Well, what we can do is we can do something called piggybacking. Piggybacking is a strategic way to just about instantly improve your credit. Now, we, got, we wanna make sure we warn you, do not co-sign. Do not co-sign with somebody that has bad credit on a credit card because they're going to ruin your credit more than likely eventually because you know they obviously have issues paying their credit off. So what you wanna do is this is a strategic operation and there's two standpoints. There's the person that's gonna help the other person, then there's the person that's getting helped, okay? Person with bad credit that's getting helped. What you need to do is you need to find somebody who has a long history of an account. They, have, they make their payments on time and they have a good credit score. And you wanna get added, and this is probably a family member or could be a friend, and you wanna get added 
add in as an authorized user of their credit card. An authorized user, you're gonna need to make sure it's gonna report. So they need to have a social security number. You need to have, they, they need to be asking you for that so that you, they can report this on your credit. So the way this works is all of the transaction history and the payments that they've made that are on time, it's going to go towards your new credit report. And so over time, in the next six months, this could dramatically influence your credit. So whatever their credit limit is, that's gonna go on your credit score. How often you're making these payments, that's gonna go on the credit score. Their credit history, their time of the account, is also gonna be added to your credit score. Now this is a tactic that people have said that is gonna go away from time to time. It still is a possible for you to do this. And so you just wanna call your credit card company and, and see if their label will allow you to add people as an authorized user. Now, if you own the credit card, like for instance, I have my $28,000 American Express credit card, if I was going to add somebody, I would wanna make sure that I can trust them. Obviously, they're having trouble currently with their credit score, so do I think that, you know, do I believe in them enough to be able to, you know, add them as an authorized user and trust them with my credit card, and then, you know, have that responsibility of paying it off. Now, it does not affect your credit in a negative way. So there's somebody with bad credit and they're being combined and joined to your account as an authorized user. None of their bad transaction history, their credit report history, comes with it. Only, it only affects their account in a positive way for the future. So their previous credit habits do not affect you or your credit or anything like that. It only helps them by adding to their future credit reporting that they have a new limit, they have higher, um, a longer history, and they're making their payments on time. All right, so the, the last strategy is gonna be something that's very, very obvious, but it's called rapid repayment. And what we wanna do is obviously just get a bunch of cash and pay off our credit cards. Now, what this, what you can do though, I wanna show you how powerful this is. There was a time where I had, a, I think, a 580 credit score, and I had, I think, $15,000 on the credit card, and I'm not sure what my credit utilization was at that time. However, I paid the entire thing off in one month, and then within 45 days, about a month and a half later, my credit score shot all the way up to 680. So 100 points, about 100 points in 45 days, which is a dramatic increase. So if you do come into a windfall of money or you start a new business that takes off or you have you know, a successful Amazon product that takes off or you do whatever you do to improve your income situation and then you put all that on your credit, you can dramatically increase your credit overnight by wiping out your credit and therefore helping your credit utilization uh, you know, become like a, you're, you're not using so much of that credit that you have available to you. So. That is it. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Credit's very, very important. It's help. It's very important for you to buy a house, to buy a car, to achieve all of your financial goals. And so you gotta know this stuff. You gotta at least understand it at a basic level like I did in this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you learned something, make sure you hit the thumbs up button or if you like the video. We're also doing a contest. Each week, two, up to two people, one or two people is gonna win anywhere from 20 to 100 bucks and I'm gonna PayPal it to them. Whoever has the best comment in the comment section down below. So comment down below, whatever your favorite comment is. It could be about this video, it could just be hilarious, whatever the case may be. And we're gonna be selecting a winner to that in the very next video. So make sure you subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.